Hi there. So today I am heading off to meet up with my brother Carson and we are gonna do our annual mushroom hunt kickoff. <laughs> so every year uh, we go out and we think the weather might be right and we search for morale mushrooms. Uh, it's really fun because they're very, very difficult to spot. You'll start to see them popping up in the woods when you've had lots of rain, so there's lots of moisture in the ground and then also uh, a combination of rain and sunlight. So once the temps start warming up after a good amount of rain, then that's usually when you'll start to see the mushrooms popping up. So we've had some pretty wild weather recently. Uh, we've just had, you know, super cold temps and even snow on, a, on one day last week. But it has warmed up just a tiny bit. This is the earliest that we've ever went out and looked for mushrooms. So we'll see if we find any. We're really not expecting uh, to find very much at all, if any. Um, but we're sure gonna try. So, all right, let's go. Oh. Yeah. They're really young still. So. You should uh, do the recipe with them. Those ones are, those ones are look fre somewhat fresh. Like he's been hidden from the frost, you know? Yep. And that one, that looks like a... Here, but we're gonna give it a couple days. Get a little bigger. And you don't like us back here. Where is he? Up in the wire, that tree is bigger. Oh yeah. He just screeched. It's a big one. Uh, we are out here finding mushrooms. Mushroom hunting is something that we like to do. <laughs> We found uh, a lot, but they're a little bit young, so we're gonna give them a little bit of time to, one right to get bigger. I didn't see that oh, one. yep. Here, I'll show you what we're looking for. We're looking for uh, morale mushrooms. And that's what they look like. We found ones that look like this. I'll pick that one. Yeah. You've only really went down. Now we Finding a few out here, but a lot of them are small. I mean, half to a quarter size of this in the light. So it's pretty early. It's what is it, April 27th, and this is about the earliest we found them, I'd say. Yeah, we've had some weird weather. And uh, so a lot of them we're gonna leave and check back in a few days. come out out and see uh we'll come back out and see how many got a little bigger or didn't make a decision from there yeah they're just oh the smell just... of childhood memories growing up 
Growing up at the farm. Yeah. I wouldn't mind making a trip over there. They, they find. I went with Uncle Kenny one time. And that's in Wisconsin at the uh, farm. My Uncle Kenny. When I went with him a long time ago, um, we used to find them. We found them like crazy. I mean, every every dead tree that you'd see that would, you know, the, zombie, the bark coming off, there was one back there. There it go. But every dead tree okay. you'd, you'd uh, come across pretty much, there would be mushrooms under it. it was, so they find a lot over there. But it go, it, it, it's hit or miss every year. You can go find a couple hundred at a spot and then go back there the next year and you might never find another mushroom there ever again. So I have no idea what the reasoning behind how they grow is. I don't know if anybody does. That's all I need. Here's oh, there's one right here. Just poking up. Yeah, there's That's a nice one. Would, Should we get it? I would say so, yeah. Oh, look okay, it, here's another one too. Right here. So, when you find one, this is what my brother Carson taught me. This is the best hunter I know. Uh, when you find one, you gotta stop, get down low, and look at all around. Because right now, as I'm saying that, I see another one right over there. You see it, Cage? Oh, yep, yeah, barely. And you can see, you know, we got down here, we found this one. Oops. He found another one over here. Because where you find one, you probably can find more. And that's the case. So we're gonna pick, these are good ones to pick, right? Oh yeah, I'd, I would take those. Those are Ooh. good enough. We got some nice ones here. And then there's one over here we're gonna pick. Try to get as much as the stem as you can, I guess. That's what my brother Carson tells me. And I do see one right over there. But you just kind of have to like get down and scope the place out because you're probably standing amongst a bunch of mushrooms that you can't see from up top unless you get down. So. I got up to walk away from that spot and I seen another one that I couldn't see from where I was at. I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one. Now I'm gonna carefully go over and pick this one. These are pretty small, but they're still a decent size to eat. Oh, nice one. Good job. There's another one under that little stick right there. It's, I would say it's pickable. That little stick right there with the one going up right under it. Kind of that best for it. Keeps it down. All right. All right finally found this so i was looking at it from this angle couldn't see it at all it's right under here my brother was looking from this angle and so he could see it it's just a tiny one but we're gonna go ahead and get it i came over here and picked one right there that my brother found and as i was over here i just took a second and looked around and seen this one. I'll go ahead and pick it. Look at that thing. Really nice. And then the leads. The leaves have protected it, you can tell. See the color difference? Mm -hmm. It's nice and light colored, and then what was sticking out? It's frosted the last couple nights. You know, that darker area is probably 
the effects of the frost and the cold. But all that stuff that was under the leaves is nice and blonde. Yep. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Really good. I wish we could find them all like that. That's nice mushroom right there. It's a good eater. Yeah. Couldn't ask for a, a better one than that. I mean, they get quite a bit bigger than this, but but that's a good one. You found one over there? Yeah, I think right under here. This one's like a little globe one. So cool. One there, right down there, and then the one right here too we just stumbled upon. So far. Small, but it'll eat. I got it. It'll eat. I am back and I gave my brother most of the mushrooms and I just took like a few of them. They're in this bowl and they're just kind of sitting in here, uh, getting clean. If there's any bugs in there, the bugs out and the dirt out. And then uh, I gave him the majority of them because he has more people that eat them <laughs> at his house. Nate doesn't really like the morel mushrooms, so I uh, just took a little handful. And so it was really fun to find these. We go out every year. We grew up finding these uh at the farm in wisconsin where my nanny and poppy who is my grandma and grandpa they had a farmhouse up there that we would always visit every kind of winter and summertime and it had a like little creek where we'd have a fishing hole and a swimming hole with a bridge and uh, we'd find mushrooms my my uncles would go out hunting and my cousins would go out hunting and uh, there's no um running water <laughs> and there's no toilet to there is an actual outhouse so it was just a lot of fun and so anytime we go out and look for these mushrooms like it reminds me of those memories growing up at my nanny and poppy's farm hanging out with all my cousins and uncles and aunts and everything so anyway I'm gonna let these guys soak a little bit and then I am going to fry them up the next day and I am going to fry up these morel mushrooms that my brother and I found. Normally I've got like this giant bowl full of them because we usually can find a pretty good amount of them but we just went looking on a whim and I uh, ended up finding a few here. So I'm just going to use my little cast iron skillet here. I got this uh, from my brother Kenny in a Christmas game. Anyway, this is, I've been using this ever since. Uh, and it's the perfect size to cook, you know, this small amount of mushrooms that I have. I've been soaking them for about 24 hours in case there's bugs in there or dirt or whatever. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll just cut off um, that bottom part where the dirt or the root was. And then I'll coat them with a little bit of flour, uh, throw them in the cast iron skillet with some butter and then sprinkle salt on them and they taste really good. So, all right, let's get started. So first, I'm gonna get my skillet heating up here. Just get that heated up first. And then we'll get the, uh, just I'm gonna put it on like kind of medium heat and then uh, we'll get the mushrooms cut up. Okay. Uh, this one is the biggest one it looks like that I have, so I'm just gonna cut it right down the middle. like that and then I can see some of them still have a little bit of dirt on it so put it back in the water So 
now I just have a bowl. I'm gonna throw some flour in there. Maybe a little more. And then we will throw these in here. Got my mushrooms cut up and they are coated with some flour and I don't salt them until the very end uh, when they have kind of fried up a little bit in the butter and then I throw some salt on there. My pan is all heated up so I'm just going to grab some butter and let this melt down a little bit. And we'll take a little bit more butter. And this will be the perfect amount just for me because Nate, like I said, Nate doesn't really like these very much. Uh, so pretty excited about that situation because <laughs> then I can just eat them all, all the time. Uh, one year we found so many that I had to freeze them because I just couldn't keep up with eating them. Uh, and then I ended up like yeah, kind of wasting a bunch because they got all mushed together when they when they froze and it just didn't work. But anyway, all right, so the butter is all melted and then I'm going to start putting these in the pan. And I just have it on like medium heat. Okay, we'll just let these fry up a little bit. While those fry up a little bit, I'm just going to clean off my cutting board. And then I usually just kind of check the bottom of them. And when it looks like that, I'll flip it. And then at this point, after I flip, uh, I usually add a little bit more butter. And then when it gets nice and brown on the other side, I go in and flip it again. And you can cook these as long as you want, really. Uh, it just depends on how what texture you like. So you can see it's getting a little bit more crisp, crispy and crunchy on the, on the outside. Um, I like them a bit more crunchy like that. I don't like them as mushy inside. Uh, that's the, just the texture I like going for. So you kind of can like squeeze it and feel the texture, but they're getting almost done, almost to the texture that I like them. You can see they're just turning more and more goldeny brown. 
and when you push on them a little bit, you can see they're kind of still a little bit mushy. But there's a really nice uh, crunchy outside going on, which is really yummy. <laughs> and then what happens is once you put the salt on them, the salt like kind of hangs out in all the little grooves of the mushrooms and, and the salt brings out like the rich flavor of the morel. Okay, I've got some salt. I'm just gonna pinch some and sprinkle it over the mushrooms. Just like that. And then we'll start taking them out and putting them on my cutting board. And at this point, I just turn the heat off because they can quickly burn once they get to this point. So I just kind of give another little flip in case we missed any mushy parts. These ones didn't take too long at all, maybe like six, seven minutes because uh, they're pretty small. But then I'll just transfer them over to this cutting board. You can do them on a cutting board if you want, or you could do like a paper towel uh, on a plate and to kind of let the grease uh, drain off there. But I got this cutting board from my friend Brian. <laughs> Nate and I got it for Christmas from him. He does all kinds of amazing woodworking. and. So I was like, I haven't even used that cutting board yet. I'm gonna put my mushrooms on it. So these are looking really yummy. I cannot wait to try these. The first mushrooms of 2023. Here they are. I'm so excited to try these. It's like, um, it's like the spring Christmas, I guess. Anytime you get to taste the, your first morel mushroom uh, that you found for the spring. So, okay, let's see how they taste. Oh my word. <laughs> Oh my word. It brings back so many memories of just like growing up on my Naughty and Poppy's farm. And then also growing up in my hometown where I live, my dad and my uncle would take us out mushroom hunting and we would hardly find any. <laughs> I remember growing up, it was like so rare to find any, but um, we found some pretty good spots lately over the past few years and we've been able to find some but also my brother Carson is like really good at knowing the right spots to look so he always says like any under any like dead apple trees or any um just old rotted tree that's fallen down always look under there uh yeah I don't know there I guess there's really no rhyme or reason sometimes but um a good hunter I feel like can always spot off the great mushroom spots but these are so yummy. <laughs> uh, if you ever go out hunting in the woods and you see one of these morels, pick it, take it home, throw some flour and salt on it and fry it in a frying pan with some butter. I don't even know how to describe what it tastes like, but it just tastes like memories and it's so yummy. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna finish up eating these mushrooms and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you had fun just kind of hanging out with my brother and I and seeing one of our little fun pastimes that we like to do every year in the spring. So hope you have a great day. Bye.